as a freelancer, you should have one standard for all your jobs, whether they're small or big. I had a little bit of a disappointing situation happen this week. I was asked to speak to a group about the importance of public speaking skills and how it can help you no matter what type of work you're in. And I got to the event early, as you're supposed to, as I recommend, and the organizer apologized. He said, you know, sorry, I forgot it was school break week and we're not expecting a lot of people tonight. In fact, quite frankly, it might only be five or six people, including the organizer. It's kind of disappointing. But here's the thing. As a freelancer, you, you still got to treat it as if it were a huge audience because you don't want your reputation to get out, that you're not giving your all. Because somebody in that audience may be seeing you for the first time, or he or she may have a connection to somebody who can give you another job. And this was a rather famous anecdote by a comedian in Hollywood. And I don't, I don't remember his name, I'm sorry to say. But he got his break because he was supposed to be appearing at this hotel in the middle of nowhere, uh, I want to say New York, and there was a major snowstorm. So bad, in fact, that the club manager was considering canceling the show. And the club was next to a hotel. And the comedian said, well, might as well go on. I'm stuck in the middle of nowhere with a snowstorm. I'll go ahead and do the show. And there were only three people in the audience from the hotel came over because it was right next to it. And so he gave, he gave it his all. And afterwards, one of those three people came up to him and said, you know, you're really good. I've got a connection out in Hollywood. And that's what started this comedian's career. And he became a big star. That's why you're supposed to treat every audience the same, no matter how small or disappointing it is. And you know, there was another way to look at it, is that when I was in the newsroom, the editor-in-chief, he used to say you have to treat even the smallest brief the same as the biggest expose story. Because if somebody's interested in that brief and there's a mistake in that brief, it's just as devastating as if it's a big story and there's a mistake in it. To that reader, to that reader of that brief, you're still giving them the wrong information. And so you never, ever want to do that. You always want to give them the best brief, the best story you can. And I used to tell the reporters this. I used to say, look, the fact of the matter is, you want to build a habit of excellence. You want to build a habit of always doing your best work. So you shouldn't slack off on something small or what you consider to be something minor. Because somebody out there might not think it's minor. But the fact is, you're building a habit. And your habit should be excellence all the time. And that's how I approached it. I got to this event. The guy told me, I'm going to be disappointed, there's only a few people. And it turned out that with the organizer, there were only six people. Told me, I said, no problem, no problem. But the first thing I did was I looked at the way the room was set up. And it was this huge U shape. I said, That's not going to work. I immediately went over and I pushed tables out of the way. And I pushed chairs away and off to the side. So that it was just a small group in front. So it forced people to sit together next to each other. So we created a more intimate atmosphere. And the reason why I did that, you'll, you'll, you know, you see this happen. I'm sure you've been at events where people will come in and sit, and they always sit sort of separate from each other. And sometimes the, or, the presenter will come out and say, oh, come on, everybody, move up, move closer together. Nobody ever really does. Sometimes. But it's hard. It's harder. Instead, you take that choice away from them by moving those chairs, moving those tables, and only giving them the option of sitting close to each other. If, there, if they needed more chairs, more people showed up, we could always put them back. Anyway, small group, they were there. I went 
I did my presentation. Uh, I sat around afterwards and talked with a number of them. They were very complimentary about what I said. They asked some questions. It went very well. It was disappointing because it, it was so small. But the fact of the matter is, is that you have to treat them the same as if it was a big audience every time if you want to have a standard for yourself. And that standard should be there if you're a freelancer. I know this because my name is Bruce Rule. I'm a writer and editor. I, I run a writing service for clients. I do social media, reports, articles, whatever they need. And I also teach public speaking uh, workshops and uh, I do some private coaching one-on-one. -on -one. I need to have a particular standard because my reputation is out there. And all my business comes from word of mouth. I've never had to advertise and I've just never ha had to depend on advertising to get clients. And that's because people know what they're getting and they recommend me. And that's really important. I think you have to understand that. I think this video should be shared because I think that any freelancer can learn from it. And I'd be curious to hear what you think about it because uh, I've always lived this way, but maybe other people have different attitudes. <laughs> I should also mention, by the way, that I have a book out, Heartfelt Goodbye, How to Write and Deliver the Eulogy Your Loved One Deserves. It's got great reviews on Amazon. It's a how-to manual, obviously. Um, if you know somebody who, who uh, has suffered a loss or is about to suffer a loss, it would actually be quite helpful for them. Um, you can certainly gift it to them. Um, or you can use it yourself. I do know that some people are, are picking up uh, the book even though they haven't had a loss yet, but they know their parents are in their 80s or 90s and are preparing, so they figured they'd better buy it early and get things prepared, and I think that's a great idea too. Anyway, until next week, please, subscribe to the channel, like and share this video, and uh, take care.